Hello, welcome back guys. This is the first time in a new beautiful woodland here in the heart of Kent. It's a lot of mixed trees in here and you can see the bluebells starting to come through. Some of the uh, woodland and enemies still lingering. But it's a, a beautiful day. I think we've got a couple of beautiful days before some more rain. So I'm out to make the most of it with what looks to be a pretty amazing tent. So I'm going to start to get unloaded because I have quite a lot of gear with me today and uh, we'll take a look at it. Right, so this is it. This is the tent. It's the Panda Air. It's by RBM. Now, I looked at one of their tents a while ago and I proclaimed it to be pretty much the best tent I'd ever used. So it's got something to live up to. Now this one is a one to six people. Um, tent and um, it is inflatable, hence the air in the name. Um, never used an inflatable tent before, I've, I've seen some before, but I have the bladders instead of having tent poles basically. So uh, I've found a flat-ish spot here, a bit hard here because it's very lumpy bumpy, but um, let's give it a go, it's pretty big. <laughs> There are three separate valves on this tent for the three separate bladders. As you can see, this is fully open and that is going to be for deflating. So we'll do that up. And then you've got this valve here for inflating with the hand pump that comes with it. Right now, I think that's fully inflated. I just have to guy it out and peg it down. Um, I'm thinking maybe I should have pegged the uh, floor first, but I thought I would be able to reposition this way. We'll see. As you can see I'm pretty much set up here. What I've learned while putting it up is you've got rain or snow flaps on the bottom that you can put over them um, pegs. You've got these big fat rope guys on the ends and um, obviously these rain flaps as well which will peg out on these straps really nicely. The um, pegs are really heavy duty which for a canvas tent like this obviously they're needed and we've got extra tie-outs free along each side of the roof which I'm not going to use because it's not particularly windy um, I'm below the ridge over there so I think we'll be fine without them now another thing of note on this is these panels here which unzip Oh, 
Oh, I look pretty yellow in here. Now, as you can see, it's two windows on one side of the roof. They're both open fully, or you can just have the mesh, which obviously is a single easy zip to open as well. So you can really air your tent in good weather. Now here you can see that network of bladders. You've got the three valves, which are middle and either end on one side. And they're all protected by these sections, which attach it to the outer there. And then they've got their own kind of pockets to protect them. So they're pretty well protected and, and kept in their bladders for forming the shape of the tent. Pretty impressive. Pretty solid too. Okay, and we've got these vented windows on the walls as well. There's four of them all the way around. And once again, the mesh and uh, the canvas there as well. So we've got a couple of pockets in here as well. One on either corner. And here's the exciting thing. We've got a stove jack as well. Yep, it's inflatable and it's a hot tent. Um, these are pretty shielded. This also looks like heat proof stuff though, I'm not sure. Um, but it's going to be well enough away for uh, safety. Here we have the outside of that stove jack. All Velcro down. Oh. Get that rolled up. Got the heat proof mat here that comes with the stove. Definitely handy to have, especially when the coals fall out the front, though that's less likely to happen with this one the way it's set up, you'll see in a minute. In this neat little package, we've got our legs, which we'll need to go like that. Like so. And we've got wing nuts just to put them in finger tight. We've got a load of stuff with the stove here. We've got the flue sections, which were inside. We've got, if you want to take the glass out and put the metal panels in, you can. And the protectors, which can also go on the side and kind of, I think, irradiate the heat. Uh, some gloves. This piece goes on the end here. And that's for regulating the amount of airflow. Got a coal scraper and the spark arrester for the top of the chimney. Now there are guide points on the um, top section of the flue if you wanted to use them. Look at this beautiful design on the side of the uh, stove here. Got the bear there. <laughs> That should look good with the uh, fire inside. It is a lovely day, but it will chill down later on. Probably the last opportunity for a hot tent. Figured with all this space, I'll uh, bring my Decathlon double airbed out with me. Why not? Really kind of get an idea of what you can fit in here. I'm still amazed by these little pumps and what I can do. Plus, I just noticed there's the same valve as on the uh, tent here as well, on the bed. I've got 
my truck brew kit with me, so I may as well use it. Time for a very short break before I continue setting up. I've opened the door on the other side now, so I've got kind of panoramic views here. Some, um, I believe, seven and a half feet wide by 13 feet long. It's so much more usable space than like a, a bell tent. Definitely. I've just noticed, I've noticed a few things. You've got windows on one side and big doors on the other. You've got um, like a washing line, guy line. Whatever you want to call it for hanging things on, you can dry your uh, clothing or whatnot. There's the vents either side as well on the on the apex. There's so many little details I keep <laughs> noticing. Oh, so yeah, I'm going to have this finish setting up, and then it's going to be uh, firewood and stove wood duty. This would make a, a lovely future hammock spot. Got two big trees here, perfect distance apart, woodland behind, and then just open farmland there. Goes on forever. <laughs> Must be a beautiful spot to use. Yeah, I think I may have to. Now this is why I've come up this end of this woodland. There's a lot of badger sets here. Just look at this. This is flint. The things they dig out of these holes. I mean a lot of this is chalk but there's some big chunks of flint. And this one is a very active set. Now I'm in one of many chalk pits here in this woodland. And I've brought my trowel camera. Now you might see behind me everywhere here there is holes. There must be a massive network under here. So I'm pretty guaranteed to get one on camera. Walking back from the other side of the woodland I could see just what a variety there is here. There's a massive yew tree just over there, which I reckon come down in the hurricane of 87 because it's all grown out the side. You got these big oaks kind of standing around. There's a lot of ash which is dying back here, unfortunately, but that's going to be my firewood tonight. Um, we've got hawthorn, hornbeam, 
a sycamore trying to come through but that's going to be managed out of here I believe as well but uh, yeah beautiful Ooh, that's uh, two ashes, not massive ones, but one was just leaning right over so I just yanked it out of the ground and pulled it back and uh, this is what I've got. <laughs> right, there's a chopping block kind of sized stump down there that I'm going to bring up and then start processing this.
Right, it's high time I got a fire going because what I'm cooking is going to take a while. Now this is just a very shallow fire pit, um, just to check for roots because I'm quite near the trees, and um, so I can cover it up afterwards. So I'll put down a base. Right, it's just going to be a couple of fire lighters today. It's getting a little overcast and obviously chilly now as well, so I think it's time to uh, button down the hatches. actually bought a new light, it's a Claris, I forget the name of it, might say it on it, CL2, and it's got these things that you can angle, and it's a torch as well, so that's the torch, and then you've got several settings for the light, and a very white light as well, and a hanger, and it's also a power bank. Also just noticed it's got a tripod mount as well, so you can have it the other way around. Can I set up with a carabiner? Very nice. I've still got a fair amount of ash to break down. <laughs> I'll do it as I go. Something could be for the morning. We'll see how much I use. Actually get to sit down for a minute. <laughs> I've got more chopping to do, but uh, I can wait for now. Get this fire established and get dinner on because it's going to take a little while to do. It's in two stages, which is the same as breakfast. Quite an extravagant breakfast, so hang around for that. But yes, sit down in front of the fire here. Build it up slowly. And uh, enjoy the birds. Shouldn't be too far off sunset. Can just about hear a road from here. There's just one road nearby. It's not a busy one, but... Uh, it's that sort of time coming up. Get the lanterns on soon. I've just found another little vent. Let's have a look at the other side. Okay, I see. This is a vent on the very opposite corner to the stove for drawing air through. I'll leave it open. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a beer. I've got some San Miguel's left over from a barbecue the other day. And I'll use my Leatherman Micra to uh, open her up. This little tool comes with me everywhere. I use the knife on it a hell of a lot. And the bottle opener. <laughs> Cheers everyone.
Right, I'm in the tent here using the table and I've got some beef brisket now. It was a bit of a miscalculation on my part because it's still quite frozen. <laughs> but that's not going to matter the way I'm cooking it. I'm going to put some oil over it. And I've got some uh, sort of barbecue spice rub I've made, paprika and chilli, cumin, garlic, onion, all the usual suspects. So I'm just going to coat it in that. Okay, let's get this lid off. Start to fry that off a bit. Now that that beef has browned a bit, I'm going to carefully add in some water and a beef stock pot and we're going to slowly cook it on beer number two and the sun hasn't even set yet <laughs> it takes a while to adjust to longer days it was getting overcast it was getting darker but uh yeah a little while yet <laughs> but the uh, dinner's on its way got quite a lot more prep to do but um i don't have to do that just yet i can chill for a bit just been chopping a little bit of wood and stuff really and enjoying being here it's nice to be in a, another new woodland they're all very individual. This one has got a lot of pheasant in it. Used to have a pheasant pen for shooting. Found some shotgun shells here and there. But yeah, that was one just then. They're going to be noisy tonight. Well, I couldn't help myself. I put the fairy lights up. Whenever it's a big tent, it's got to have fairy lights. <laughs> Just looks nice, doesn't it? A little extra light as well out here, out front, along with my lanterns. This beef should be almost done now, really. Sun's gone down and we're into dusk. My favourite part of the evening. Yeah. So, shortly I'll uh, start on my other parts of dinner. Right, first up I've got some uh, plum tomatoes here, so I'm just going to cut them like so, and I'm just going to take out the seeds from the middle, because they're too juicy and wet. I'm going to 
to do that for all of them and then just dice them up. Right, so it's garlic time. Just going to uh, cut these up pretty much as small as I can. Right, so I've got a couple of limes here. I'm just going to make some segments and squeeze that in. I sharpened my knife and my axe, but not this knife. What a wally. Got some coriander here. Just gonna ball it up. I've got rid of some of the stems, but not all of them. I'm just gonna chop that. Now some avocado. Hmm, have I got a spoon? The answer is yes. So this is going to have squeeze of lime. Keep it nice and green. It's going to get a bit of a mash. And a little bit of this with it. Yes, my salsa does not have onion in it or chilli. And you can guess why. Yes, I forgot it. Right, it's time, I think, to get the meat out. As you can see, I cut it into smaller pieces a little while ago. Let's get all this. <clears throat> and this should pretty much, yeah pull apart oh, some nice pulled brisket with spices look at that come apart beautiful I'm just going to pour over those juices Okay, so here we go. A layer of these. And go ahead and put some this pulled beef. And some of our strange salsa. <laughs> some pre-grated cheese and then for layer two let's 
same again. Get some pulled beef in there. And once again, a load of cheese. Let's grab us some coals. Stick on the top. Just the waiting game now. Should only take about 20 minutes, but I'm starving. I don't even know what the time is now. 20 past nine. Got here at 11 o'clock. I ate on the way. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very, very hungry. All right, let's have a look. Oh, I'm calling that good enough. Off. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, that looks good. I didn't think about getting it out. <laughs> Let's just do this. Oh. So we'll do that. Load up the plate. Cheese, cheese, cheese. Put the lid on. And with this, add some guac. Didn't mash it up too good. And some sour cream. So how does that look? Oh, it looks pretty good to me. I think this is my first time doing nachos on the channel. Mm. So hungry. Check out that beef on its own. Mm. Really good. I'm inside. It's well insulated, the sound. <laughs> Stove's lit, so that's nice. And for some reason I'm sat on the floor right now, even though I've got a bed and a chair and a rug. <laughs> I've even got something I'll show you in a second. I did it once before and everyone found it quite funny. <laughs> that's right, it's my old man's slippers again. <laughs> Well I may as well save some gas and make a brew on the stove while it's lit. It is lit, it's just blacked up a little bit because of um, closing down the vent there. It was getting a little bit too hot. <laughs> I'm really liking this light. I can direct the light kind of wherever I want. Pretty cool. Not cheap, but cool.
Got no boy hot chocolate. Ooh, and it is hot. Ooh, that's a sweet kick. Oh, well, I'm gonna finish this and get myself off to bed. Probably get up quite early. We'll see. <laughs> I don't think um, we're going to get a weather test of this tent tonight, but it is kind of a treated cotton canvas thing. There's <laughs> that anti um, mould stuff on as well. But uh, well, we'll see. Showers have been coming out of nowhere lately. <sighs> right, good night, and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Sorry, it's quite treacherous ground here where the badgers have been digging. I um, wanted to get out and get the uh, camera first while I remember, and secondly, um, where am I? <laughs> and secondly, I'm quite excited to see what's on there because there's just so many sets there. So, oh, sun's coming out. Some blue sky. Not sudden. It's been pretty cold and chilly this morning. Well, let's get back. Okay, let's see here together if we got anything. That is a pheasant. Oh, badger, badger, badger. <laughs> Another badger, yeah. Right, I'll put these on the screen now for you. Okay, got a bit of a fire base here and a couple of fire lighters, a bit of a brace, some twiggies. I'm in the tent because it's pretty windy out there and I've got this bread mix that I've made. Um, 
hard to measure out my water because this mug goes to 500 as the minimum. So that's about halfway, a little bit more. And I'm just going to warm this water over the fire before I put it into the mix here. Just put that by the fire here, shouldn't take long. Right, this is that water warmed. I'm not going to add it all at once. Okay, time to get my hands in. Okay, that's now starting to come together pretty well. And as soon as it's ready, I'll uh, transfer it to the Dutch oven to prove. Breakfast. Much the same as the two-stage dinner. I'm just going to prove this in here for baking. And while that bread's proving, I'm just going to fry up some little bacon parts. Well, we've grown pretty substantially, so I'm going to try Slip down it, and we'll get it on some coals. So we'll stick it on here. The idea here is to get the temperature up quickly and then uh, drop it down a little bit because you're heating that Dutch oven up which holds the heat. Bit of a balancing act really, but yeah you want to go from that proofing stage to baking as quickly as possible. sun's out but the wind's picked up a bit makes baking on a campfire a little tricky so I'm really kind of nannying it and then we got stage two <laughs> all right moment of truth she's looking pretty good I'd say while that bread's cooling I'm gonna break a couple of eggs into here Quite small, I'm gonna go with three. And I'm gonna give them a bit of a whisk. Add in some milk and some sugar. I don't know. <laughs> give that a bit more of a mix. 
Can you guess what it is yet? The bacon. And some blueberries. I think the bread well, is cooled a bit. It's a nice loaf. Oh yeah, beautiful. And we're just gonna tear this up. In fact, I might take more of the filling. The middle than the outside. Ooh. See, if I'd waited for this to cool down completely, it wouldn't squidge together so much. All right, so into the lined Dutch oven with the bread. And the mixture, which I will definitely need more of. <laughs> And in we go with some more mixture. I'm just going to mix that up with my hands. Get it soaked in. Yeah. And that'll push that down just a bit. One last time, Dutch oven on the fire. Well, this Dutch oven's seen a lot of use on this camp. <laughs> Now, I've never tried this recipe before. Um, I know it's a thing that exists, but I think adding bacon to it's gonna be quite something. Think about 20 minutes, do it gently, try and get it browned on top, that'd be nice. Some butter on it would have been good, but taking butter to camp's always a bit of a pain. Yeah, we'll see soon. I've been uh, nibbling on the bread because I'm so hungry. <laughs> now, it's a good time to mention the tent and um, RBM they uh, gave me a discount code for you guys 5% off um, I think that's anything off the site that'll be below in the description um, second tent of theirs I've used and the second stove as well um, if you remember that first stove I proclaimed to be amazing because it went all night on just a couple of bits of oak with just a little bit of air being drawn in um, but yeah I didn't want to like this tent, but I really do. <laughs> I really do. Um, big tents are a lot to manage, but they do smaller tents as well. Um, and it is all really good stuff. I think it's same uh, free shipping in America and Canada, because that's where they're kind of based. But um, yeah, amazing tents. Um, see the links in the description. Okay, it's big reveal time. Oh. Oh, 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 it looks really good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, it's time for that final touch. Drown it in syrup. Oh, them blueberries look fantastic. Oh, oh it's hot. This is one of my favourite breakfasts I've done at camp. This is something I'm going to be doing at home from now on. <laughs> Oh god, them blueberries make things look amazing. Mmm. I'm glad I've got enough to take home. <laughs> oh, 
that crispiness on top. A little bit of butter on top would be great to do it in the oven at home. It's looking a lot like it's about to rain, so I think I need to get this tent down or I'm going to have to dry it somewhere, somehow. Right, that's everything except the tent, so I'll try and time myself, but I'm filming, so... Right, okay, let's go. Okay, pegs and uh, hanking up the guys, that was about four minutes. Oh, time to let the air out. If I had one bit of feedback, I'd say these could be not so tight, because there's no real reason for them to be. The um, cover, I mean. There we go. <laughs> Maybe another four or five minutes to um, let all the air out and then just fold it in and take my shoes off and kind of walk the air out of it. Now the folding. Well, I'm calling that about 20 minutes, not perfectly in the bag, but I've got to take it out anyway because I'm going to have to uh, clean the bottom and dry it off a bit. Right, thanks for watching guys. Um, check out the links below. I'll try and link everything I've used in this video that you might be interested in because quite a few things. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.